he shall testify. He's a teacher and a messenger. He shall testify of me. The Holy Spirit is the ordained of the Father to be the custodian of the truth of the Son of God. He shall testify of me. The Comforter gives a testimony of Jesus. And he comforts by that testimony. That's what comforts. Mm -hmm. He shall testify of me, and you'll be comforted. Mm -hmm. The apostles were filled with sorrow because Jesus was leaving. But now Jesus says, I'll send you another comforter, and he shall testify of me. Mm -hmm. And we know that the apostles saw much more of Jesus after he left than he did when he was here. The Holy Spirit doesn't comfort anyone by telling them about them. The Holy Spirit comforts them by telling them about him. That's the comfort. There is no help like the help of knowing Jesus. I thought of the, the book of, uh, the Fox's book of martyrs. Of all the testimonies of brethren who lost every other comfort but Jesus. Because because they couldn't take that comfort from them. They took everything else from them, and they would not have traded the comforter to get all the other comforts back. In fact, they didn't. That's why they died. Paul called this knowledge, the knowledge of Jesus, in Philippians chapter 3, he called it excellency. Nothing else was comparable. Excellency. Moses considered the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Now, both Paul and Moses could have had another sort of comfort. Paul left uh, his position in Jewry, which was, by another standard, was very comfortable. Moses left his position in Egypt, which by their standard was very comfortable. They both, in light of knowing Jesus, and of course, we, we know that in Moses' case, it was, it was uh, uh, in, a, in a prophetic way, it was in looking forward that Moses didn't use the name Jesus, but he was, by faith, he was seeing Jesus. Both of them threw off one comfort for another comfort. The comforter shall testify of me. Paul and Moses both stand as examples that knowing Jesus does in the heart what nothing else can do. What else would have convinced Saul to leave what he had? What else would have convinced Moses to leave what he had? Those who know Jesus and have the comforter testifying of him, those people can face death with peace. Nobody else can do this. They can, they can die happy because they, they're comforted. They have a comforter. They can rejoice in the spoiling of their goods. That means they were robbed. That's what happened to the Hebrew Christians. They can count their life not dear unto themselves when they have the comforter testifying of Jesus. They will have a peace that passes all understanding, all understanding because they have the comforter testifying of Jesus. Now, it's not possible to know Jesus without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Without his testimony, Jesus is not known. There is no other source of revelation. Amen. Without knowing Jesus, comfort can only be simulated. A person may be able to be calm without Jesus, but they cannot, in the truest sense, be comforted without Jesus. Without knowing the Prince of Peace, can there be peace? Without knowing the Good Shepherd, can there really be leading without knowing the high priest is there really an advocate see the comforter comforts by testifying of Christ if you do not know that you're accepted and approved and received of God there cannot be comfort if you do not have uh, the leading of the good shepherd leading you in and out to find pasture there will be no comfort. Without knowing that he, Jesus, as a high priest, takes up your cause and stands and speaks in your behalf, there cannot be any comfort. Any comfort. Without knowing the way and the truth and the life, 
There is no comfort to be had. What torment could the father of lies subject us to if we are ignorant of Jesus? Well, Satan can just pick his torment. For those, who are, for those who are unaware, for those who do not have the comforter to testify of Christ, then Satan, he takes them captive at his will. That's what Paul said to Timothy. Take them captive at, at his will. Now finally, the fourth and final is the text that Judah read for us, John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go away, if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, after this somewhat lengthy discourse that Jesus gave to the disciples on that night, of which the night concluded by the, the shepherd being struck and the sheep scattered. That's how this night ended. And then, of course, Peter followed uh, at a distance. But Jesus says, it is expedient for you that I go away. After all this, when you go, we're going to be hated. When you go, we're going to be cast out of the synagogue. When you go, we're going to have tribulation. And you say it's going to be better? It's, how, is, how is this an advantage that you're leaving? What are we going to say to the, to the Pharisees when they say, shall we render unto Caesar? Shall we pay taxes unto Caesar or not? What are we going to say when they bring a sinner and say they were caught in the very act and the, the law says they should be stoned? What are we going to say? But it was better. It would be better that Jesus goes. This must, at first at least, this must have been confounding to the disciples. Sorrow was filling their heart because he said, I go away. It must have sounded strange. How can this be better? Well, they would soon find out. The apostles already knew that they needed help. They knew that they weren't sufficient. But while Jesus, even while Jesus was with them, they knew they needed help. But now that he's leaving, now that he's leaving, I dare say that their ears were wide open to this word of another comforter. Now, many, of, many people in our day have said that it would... It would have been better for them if they had lived back there in their day. <clears throat> to see the miracles of Jesus, to hear the teaching of Jesus. But by the time Jesus died, he, he didn't have much of a following because of the miracles, did he? It's better for us that he went away. Amen. Not just for the 12 apostles. Amen. It's better for us. It was, it was an advantage for us that he went away because what Jesus is doing now from the right hand of God is far greater than what he did in the world. The multiplied bread is nothing compared to being born again and having life more abundantly. The lame man that walked again was just a shadow of people that walk in heavenly places. He does a greater work now. Amen. The water that was turned into wine was little into the, in the light of Saul turning into Paul. Can these be compared? Men can make wine, but nobody can make a Paul out of a Saul but Jesus. Amen. I'll just leave you with this uh, concluding thought. Jesus didn't leave this world because the work was done. He left this world because the work in this world was done. Peter said on the day